Hi, this is Bill Abbott. I'm the cartoonist for Spectacles and uh, the Percenters. And I was asked on social media to do a post, a recording of me creating a Spectacles cartoon from start to finish. Uh, this is like my, uh, it's got to be my sixth time <laughs> trying this. Um, I'm a kind of a technical boob. But uh, my first attempt was on my Cintiq, which uh, apparently the microphone is really close to where the fan is. So it literally sounded like I was speaking in a wind tunnel uh, or with a aluminum bucket on my head, which for those wondering, I was, I was not actually this time wearing a, an aluminum bucket on my head. So I switched to my Surface Pro, uh, I'm sorry, Surface yeah, Surface Pro 5, and rather than Photoshop, which kept closing itself down once I fired up the uh, recording software, it's uh, Debut, which is through the Microsoft Store. Apparently, it's it takes up so much memory, it shuts all other stuff down. So, I'm back to uh, recording this and drawing on Clip Studio Paint Pro. Um, I recently switched back to Photoshop CS5, because a lot of the classes that I've been taking through Schoolism and um, Aaron Blaze, really, really terrific classes and amazing artists. They all use Photoshop, uh, one form of it or another, as a standard. And so their instructions are really specific. And um, so I, I was just using Photoshop so that I could kind of follow along. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use Clip Studio Paint Pro, which is what I've used for a long time. I love it. It's a really great program. Um, so we'll give it a whirl. All right. The very first thing that I'll do is I want to open up a new document. So I'll go over to file and new. And I usually use seven inches by seven inches by 400 DPI, uh, which is just what the, my uh, syndicate creator syndicate, uh, what they kind of gave me as a guideline. Okay. So there we go. There's our new document. And if you look over, if you can follow my cursor, um, if you look over here for layers, what I'll do is I'll double tap on that and I'll label that my pencil layer. Because when you get a few layers, it's easy to get confused, especially a guy like me. Should have worn a helmet more when I played football. Okay, so there's my, my uh, pencil layer. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you look over here, these are my tools. And I use the pencil icon, oddly enough, to, uh, to do my penciling. So I had this idea for a cartoon. Uh, my wife and I, we recently met with our accountant. And of course, that's all about taxes. So I had taxes on my mind. And for whatever reason, uh, this, this idea came to me. So the first thing I do is I, I sketch it out. I always start with the nose. It gives me kind of a central point of reference for the Spectacles characters. And the top of the glasses. Um, a lot of times I'll try to, to uh, change the angle of the head. I don't know why, it just seems to give it more interest or you know maybe make it look like he's got a quizzical look or something like that. Uh, that also may just be in my head, but anyway. So, drawing the mouth. Always make the mouth kind of pouty. My son Thomas just asked me about that, you know, why I do that. And uh, like most things, I had no, no answer. Uh, I could have lied to him convincingly, but uh, but I didn't. So anyway, there's the jaw, his ear, his other ear. There's the bottom rim of his glasses, the other side. And just kind of give him the shape of the body. And then we'll start drawing the other character, not the female character. This is kind of a different different guy generic guy again I always start with a nose and then um, just go with square glasses that's about the limit of my creativity there's the square glasses and the top of his coconut there and his mouth is always crooky kind of mouth and then the big pouty jutty lip very technical I think that's a medical term jutty and the jaw, the bottom of the jaw, and a hint of his ear beyond the glasses. And the head looks a little small. So this is, this is kind of a cool thing that you can do. Uh, I take the selection tool, 
and I'll kind of pick that out and this I don't know if you can see this this little round thing with the the arrows going out you can alter the image so I'll just take a corner of it and I'll drag it just a little bit if the head looks too small I can make it about uh, the right size in proportion to the other guy okay so we'll hit OK there's that close that out back to the pencil tool so then we'll go down here I always have these I I don't know why but I always get a kick out of the like a, a look of a really like the sloping uh, shoulders um, I get I think it just makes the, the characters look a little funnier and uh, the uh, I guess it, it's an indicator of their attitude uh, not particularly motivated or excited about anything give them a coat we're pretty formal here at uh, the Abbott Studios they're all wearing coats there's the lapel pocket kind of reminds me I was uh, I was wearing a suit coat recently and every time I go to put my hand in my pocket or put something in the pocket they're always sewn shut no idea why they do that they just they have a sense of humor I don't know anyway there's this jacket okay Let's start his arm the folds in his garment whatever that's going to be there's the arm round to the shoulder a little bit bring this down I have him holding something just get a basic shape to the hand and I'll fill in details later he's gonna be holding a can a little panhandling on the street there okay if he's gonna be panhandling he should probably have a sign so people know what he's up to what he's looking for best uh, before we give it get it to the ink layer just so I don't forget Kind of test out the look, see if that works. A little string around his neck there. His belly coming out. I'll have a little jacket on too. Okay, a little panhandler fashion there. And let's see, let's get his other hand in. And again, this is just, just roughing everything out. Will be uh, what I'll do is I'll create another layer after this, and that'll be my ink layer. And then that's uh, you kind of work everything out on the pencil layer, and then you ink everything in when you're when you're pretty confident that it looks the way you want it to look. At least that's what they say on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Make sure we give them some uh, some whiskers. Okay. His fingers more defined on this hand, and then this guy looking to be a generous guy, sort of. He's giving the guy a coin. There's his arm. The high pants. I don't know why. Just um, pants. I I guess I used to see this in uh, in older generations, but the the uh, pants in the front would be pulled up just below the chin. It seems like, but in the back they would be drooping. I it's a trick of physics. I didn't even know that was possible, but uh, they they make it happen. Um. So there's that. Okay. So same for this guy. And down not too worried about the edges um, I have these templates that this stuff gets dropped into and you'll, you'll see that when I do that okay so that's pretty much good for the um, pencil layer so what I'll do is I'll go over here you can see uh, new layer I'll double tap that rename that ink hit enter and that'll remain uh, normal um, well it's normal as anything in my house Okay, we'll go over to the pen. Usually, uh, I select 17. That's uh, as far as the, the uh, 
tip of the pen that's 17 pixels wide and that seems to work the uh, clip studio and the the pen that comes with the surface pro is pressure sensitive so the harder i push the wider a line uh, i get um let me see expand in and start capturing that okay so now we'll start inking in that line might be a little bit thin but let's go with it over here which cool with the surface studio um is you have the you use your fingers and you can drag stuff move stuff around the screen which makes it really convenient and uh speeds up the process pretty well I, I really like it the one thing that i don't care for too much um about the uh the, the surface pro is sometimes it when you look the wine the line is a little whittle, whittle. uh no i haven't had any wine yet um is a little wobbly and that's a that's something to do with the software there's a setting that you can adjust um and i usually do it but i've been using photoshop so long now i can't remember what it is i'll have to go in and, and find that out but i also just noticed that my line uh it was not all black it was actually uh like gray but this is for the demo we'll we'll get through it okay let's color that in okay i think it's the stabilization i think that's what makes it okay we're going to drop that down because it also when you use the stabilization tool um it creates a lag and that that makes it kind of a pain in the butt too while it, it helps to uh to deal with the wobble it slows down the rate yeah i see there's a wobble there but it slows down the rate that you can draw and when you have a lot of work to do that can um, that can be a little bit of a problem so let me see we'll use the paint bucket tool uh down here we'll just boom that's black that's black saves me a little time we'll go up here to his mouth there Good pouty lip and then we'll close the mouth make sure there's uh, no open ends or the paint bucket tool just paint everywhere boom we're good okay back to the pen over here There's his ear. Do his jaw. Do some uh, some whisker action here. Yeah, the Surface Pro is really great. Uh, this is my second one. Um, not because of need necessarily but because the first one uh which was a surface pro 4 i accidentally dropped out out of my truck when i opened up the door uh which which was not a, a pleasing thing so uh, because i always had deadlines um i had to go out and buy another one so don't drop these i've since put this one in a uh um what is the the uh, otter box uh they make cases for these otter box and otter box is pretty famous for um the iphone cases being you know the super tough iphone cases so i figure if i break that then you know maybe i should go back into construction or something anyway there's his little sign over here Line there. I'm trying to work quickly because uh, sooner or later I know Arlie, my dog, my black lab, she's going to see a squirrel in the backyard and she's going to let loose. So <laughs> any uh, any audio will be drowned out by her um, just, just getting after it with the squirrel. And there are plenty of squirrels. I think the squirrels actually taunt her. So, so there's that. Okay. There we go. 
I'm not the greatest at lettering, but hopefully it's legible. And before we do that, we'll do his hand, just so we kind of don't overwrite anything that we're not supposed to. There's his knuckles, forefinger, middle, ring, and pinky. There's his palm underneath, his thumb, and then the round of the back of his hand. Wrist. Getting an anatomy lesson out of me, too. How about that? And there. Okay. Finish the lettering. This is probably too neat. I imagine if a guy, well, at least the ones that I've seen around here, their signs are usually written in like Sharpie, uh, just enough to get the job done. Okay, this guy's a little more, a little more uh, into quality, I guess, when it comes to his lettering. Okay, so we'll do this guy's finger. Curve. And then the coin. A little, little figure under there, whatever that might be. And the thumb, and the web of the hand. Okay. This guy's forearm. Oh yeah, and then there's the, the tin cup. And the fingers. Back around. Okay. This belly. Okay. What's going on there? Okay, here we go. The rest of his jacket. I press pretty hard, so I don't seem to get a whole lot of line variants. I, I tend to get more when I use Photoshop and on the Cintiq. Uh, the Cintiq is great. It's, it's pretty expensive. Um, but as far as, uh, unless you use an external microphone, you would have thought you were uh, standing outside on the tarmac at the airport trying to hear me talk, which may have actually been a good thing, but uh, at least for the sake of this, not so much. So, the bottom of his jacket, leg, there's his pocket, probably sewn like mine. Top of his legs there. All right, the other side of his jacket. How are we looking? I think that gets it. Okay, we'll do with this guy now. His nose. Always start with the nose for some reason. See that little wobble there? Well, what are you going to do? These square glasses. There's the top of bridge. Okay. That looks a little big, doesn't it? Okay, so we'll... Oh, didn't want to do that. I hit the little back button. Whatever I did do, I just undid. Oh, that looks a little big. Drop that down. Bring his glasses more into proportion to the other. Okay. That looks a little wonky. Yeah, 
looks more like it. That's a little too wide. Come up and then over here. And then we'll use the paint bucket tool again, save ourselves a little bit of time. I'm going to seal that there. I'll paint the whole picture black. Okay, and then down there, good. And we'll do the top of his head. Well, that's a little short. Let's give him more skull. Let's use more skull. And that's the lip, upper lip finger there. I don't know what you call that thing. The dividing line of the upper lip. Pouty bottom lip. Cheek. And up around the ear. Give him his other ear there. Head slightly off center, at least for his tie. For those who are super fashion conscious. And his droopy shoulders. Make that line a little thick there. Loose hand. And his knuckles. Okay. His sewn up pocket. jacket top of his super high pants over here put that tie in there there we go oh there's his lapel can't forget his lapel Let's see. There's a lapel and with a bit of perspective. Pretty highfalutin. Perspective thing. Okay, there's his forearm. Go back a little bit. There we go. Finish off his jacket. Okay, now what I do, um, some like this, some don't, but in the newspapers, uh, this is going to be printed in black and white. So what I'll do is I'll add as much bold black as I can uh, without making it kind of overdone, which uh, I sometimes do. Um, but when everything is bold black, you don't really get to see uh, dividing lines for detail. And I know there's there's a, a bunch of different ways to do this. I know cartoonists, um, some do it different ways. They they prefer not this way, uh, but this works for me. And uh, so hopefully you'll see the effect when I'm done. And uh, you tell me what you think. Okay, so there's that. Got to seal everything off when we use the paint bucket tool, which is really a huge time saver. Uh, everything has to be, I guess the term is sealed. It all has to be sealed. Okay, so top of his legs there. Uh, I think we can get away with that. So that'll be the white dividing line. And you'll see once I hit the paint bucket. Over here. see let's do it in here hopefully that won't look too kooky we'll come down to here beautiful okay so let's see if that works so we'll take go back to the paint bucket tool this one 
drop that in boom got it okay so we'll go back here and we need to do his lapel make sure everything's sealed up here so we can make that use a paint bucket just color that okay now we'll do our white dividing line coming down around the lapel and then back up here okay finish off the lapel make that small again okay back to the paint bucket tool boom 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 done okay over here we'll do some of the same stuff we've got to seal that there and here and here The good thing about these classes that I'm taking is I, I learn a tremendous amount. These these other artists are just, they're scary good. Actually, shamefully good. They're so good. They've uh, used up all the talent. Uh, just that good. I love, uh, especially Aaron Blaze. His his work is just crazy phenomenal. And he's a, he's a great teacher. I, I, if you uh, check out his videos on YouTube and I don't, I don't know Aaron Blaze, so I don't have any dog in that fight. Uh, I just generally, uh, genuinely love his work and, uh, the method that he teaches. And, uh, it's just, it's really great stuff. What happened there? Okay. Oh, we didn't seal that. Okay. There we go. Hopefully one of a black thumb, although I've done that with a hammer once or twice. Okay. All right, we'll continue down, hit this, good, that, good, and that, good. Okay, for our main character, I think I'll keep his jacket not black, so we have a little bit of uh, variation there, but we'll seal everything off, make sure that we're not coloring in stuff that we shouldn't, so we'll seal that. Okay, there's that. We'll just give him black pants. There's the top of his legs there. And I think we got it. So we'll go down here. Boom, we'll hit that. Done. Okay. And what I'll do next, just color in this lettering. Because again, it's when it shows up in newspapers, it's unfortunately pretty small. So everything kind of has to jump out at you. Use this up. Again, the, the use of bold black. Your lettering has to be as, as clear as you can make it. Um, and as minimalistic as you can make it too. I, I, when I first started in cartooning, um, I, I basically read everything I could find. And one of the things that I remember, and I wish I could remember where I, I read it, but you basically have four seconds. If you're a cartoonist, you have four seconds of attention from the average viewer, um, someone reading the newspaper. So you're, visuals and your lettering the gag line has to be consumed understood and uh, it either works or it doesn't all in the span of four seconds which is not a lot of time so that's why cartoons have to be uh, in many respects minimalistic um, but oh there you go okay that works all right so now what I do um, let me see here. Uh, oh, hang on one second. I just had to grab something. Okay. I had a thumb drive in uh, the Cintiq, which I was using earlier this morning, but we'll need that. Okay. Cool that. Okay, so what I do next is I go to File, Open, and you'll see all the stuff I've got in here. And I have a frame blank that I created. It's a JPEG file. And again, it just saves me a little bit of time. So there's my frame blank. I use that every time. So I go back to the comic. I make sure that it's this is on the just the ink layer. So I'll go to select all, edit, copy. And I'll go back to my frame blank, edit, and paste. Boom, there it is. So then I will take my move tool and I'll kind of try to move it around so that it, it 
it's centered okay. Uh, its relationship from top to bottom is okay. Um, maybe a little bit of white space, and that looks about right. And then I'll just fill in their pants on the bottom. And it's still on the ink layer, so I'll bring it up a little bit. And let me see, we'll go back to the pen tool, kind of fill this out some more. And because they're on two separate layers, when I use the, um, the paint bucket tool, I had any of the black lines that are on the frame blank layer won't be seen by the paint bucket and it'll just splash it all over the place. So I have to uh, seal that on the other layer. That probably doesn't make any sense, but okay. His legs again down to here. There we go there. Just to be sure, we'll give that another line across. Okay, we'll go over to the other fella. Same thing, we'll continue down here. Down to this line, we'll continue to drag that across. And then the separation of his legs, there. And again here. Again, you kind of see that little wobble, but uh, not a lot. At least for this one anyway, we not a lot we can do about it. And uh, we're not too awfully worried about it. Okay, I'll go across here. And down to here. And now, hopefully, the paint bucket tool will recognize it's all boxed in. There we go. Beautiful. Done. Okay. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I, I do. You would be shocked at how many times I forget to do this. Sign my work. I have some of the uh, the cartoons, that they've actually made it to print some of the stuff that I worked really hard on. And um, there was one I did of the the uh, the ceiling um, done by Michelangelo, the uh, Sistine Chapel. And I forgot to sign my name. Yeah, I'm that guy. Okay, what I figure I would do just for fun, this cartoon will actually appear toward, I think, in the third week of May. So rather than hold back this, uh, I guess you could call it a, tutor a tutorial on how I draw, I'm going to leave off the punchline, and I'm going to post this uh, pretty much right away, and then um, you can guess to see what the punchline is, tell me what you think, and then you'll see what I have uh, when it publishes. I'll, uh, I'll post it on Facebook. And I'll put it on YouTube as well, uh, the actual publication date that this is going to show up. I, if I was a smarter man, I would have had that available. Uh, but there you have it. Um, but I'll post that so you can see when this cartoon actually uh, makes it into the newspapers and stuff. And, and the day that you'll see it in color on, um, on YouTube. And what I'll do too is I'll also show the coloring process for this at a, at a later time. But I'm really grateful that you spent some time with me here and that you had an interest in this. And um, I will see you on Facebook or <laughs> Instagram or the others or YouTube. Uh, many thanks again. Take care.